All right, the hook I have in the vise is a Daiichi 1140 in a size 14. And this is a nymph uh, hook, a scud hook, really. Um, so it's got a nice um, wide hook gap. Uh, and it works great for these soft, soft tackles. Uh, the thread I'm using is a uni thread in black, and that's a uh, eight aught. Uh, the tips of this material, um, well, it's not very durable for tails. Uh, so I'm using Coq de Lyon. Um, I mean, it's no big deal if the tail breaks off, but um, you know, I'm going to put the effort into tying the fly. I'm, I'm going to have a tail that's going to last if I use the Coq de Lyon. And so for that, I'm using a brown, um, and that's a speckled. And then uh, I'm using uh, for the ribbing uh, UTC ultra wire, and uh, that's a copper wire in a size small. Um, Hungarian partridge in a natural. And then for for the thorax, um, I would use, uh, normally would use either dubbing or peacock hurl. I'm going to use ice dubbing. Um, ice dub uh, in a olive color, so very similar to peacock hurl, um, but a little easier and a little tougher. Uh, so let's get started. All right. I'm going to lay down a base of thread here, just dress the hook. And I'm using black, but mainly so that it it's easier to see on camera. Um, I wouldn't normally use black. I uh, would use um, tan or even white. Just wrap down a little, a little deep into the bend, see, and then that'll extend that body. You can really utilize that, the shape of the hook. Um, at this point, we're going to tie in the tail. Like I said, I'm using the Coq de Leon, so I'm going to grab a, cl a clump. I don't know how many fibers that is. Probably a dozen. And this stuff is, if you, if you screw it up, you can, when you pull it off, um, the tips won't align, but these, these are close. So as, as far as length goes, I'm going to say it's about um, maybe a half the length of the uh, hook shank. And it's not long enough. I'll pull a few more down. All right, and we're gonna wrap down a little further. And all the tail is supposed to represent is just um, the casing or the shock that the fly is shedding as it's emerging to the surface. off your excess and then next we'll tie in the ribbing and I'm tying it on the near side near nearest to me on my side of the hook wrap that all the way down to the tail to the, the point where we tied in the tail Got an extra fiber hanging out here. I'm gonna get rid of that now. All right, put the rib tied in. Now we're gonna put the body material in. 
So I'm going to grab a clump. Again, a clump. Uh, I don't. Maybe a dozen fibers. Pull these out straight out so that the tips are aligned. And uh, some people just pull them off. I like to cut them. Okay. Now we're going to orient the tips towards the eye of the hook. And we're going to tie those in. Now, grabbing all this material, let's, let's place our, we're going to end our, just park our tying thread about a third of the way down the hook shank. And we're going to wrap the body material once around at the, at the, at the base of the fly, at the, at the tail end. Okay, so you get good coverage at the tail and then spiral the material up the shank and you can use your finger to keep it from unraveling because it will otherwise. When you get up towards the top, just switch hands and give it a couple wraps, hold it in place and then wrap in front a couple times. Cut off that material. Now with the ribbing, we're going to wrap in the opposite direction, so counter wrapping. Let's make sure our thread's in the right place. We're going to counter wrap this. And this wire will greatly improve durability of this fly. Add some some flash. Next, we're going to tie in our our thorax, and for that, I'm going to use ice dub in olive. This material will um, obviously give a lot of, um, put off a lot of flash, uh, but it should uh, also mimic an air bubble behind the wing as the fly is emerging. And we're just going to put a ball, dubbing ball, right there. Leave enough room for the wing. I don't want to crowd the eye too much. Now, with the wing, we're going to... I People put these in a little different. Everyone's a little different. Many tie, uh, tires will tie this in so that the curve is facing the inside of the curve this part, the inside of the fly, uh, the feather is um, facing the fly. I tie it in the opposite and facing me. And then when I wrap it around the hook, it will orient properly. see hopefully um, and then see it just spins around okay and 
and we're not going to put a lot of material down. I'm going to sparsely dress this. Maybe so that's once around. And we're going to preen those uh, that material back. And that's about all I want. Once we get it, I'm going to trap the stem with the thread. A couple wraps in front. Cut that material out. Cut that stem out. Pull those fibers back. Build up your head. What this head's going to do as you're building up this thread, it's going to hold the feathers, orient the feathers back to the rear. That's it. That looks good. Finish with a uh, grab my whip finisher. That's the fly finished with head cement or um, UV epoxy cure. Um, yeah. that was, that's the fly. Uh, fish that downstream, swinging it. Um, as it's at the end of the swing, it'll start to come move up in the column. It'll look like an emerger. You can fish this uh, upstream as you would a traditionally uh, as a traditional nymph. Um, it's not weighted. You could wait. You could use a slightly longer hook and 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 put a bead on this um, and fish it in a weighted version. Uh, but this one's unweighted, so I wouldn't use this as my point fly, but um, as a dropper. That's the fly. Thanks for watching. See you next time.